Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. When you make it through all of your tests and all of your temptations and you're standing firm, then you are doubly filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and God can use you in even a greater way than what he's ever used you before. Well, I thought this weekend after prayer and pondering that I wanted to teach you some things about how to handle temptation. What to do when you're tempted. How to stay one step ahead of the devil. Does that sound good to anybody? Yeah. Instead of always letting him chase you, stay one step ahead of him. Does anybody here ever get tempted? Okay. And you know, when we talk about temptation, We're talking about everything from the temptation to worry, the temptation to be jealous, the temptation to be greedy, the temptation to be selfish and self-centered, all the way to the temptation to lie, to steal, to commit adultery, to do all kinds of different things. And so I don't think that there's any of us that don't experience temptation, and I don't think there's very many of us that probably don't experience it in some way, shape, or form basically every single solitary day. I want you to know straight out that temptation is not sin. I think a lot of people think, oh, I shouldn't feel this way, or I shouldn't think this, or, you know, how, how could I want that, or, you know, I shouldn't get mad, or I shouldn't feel that way. And I know myself, for a lot of years, every time I felt tempted to do something wrong, especially if it was very strong, and especially if it didn't go away right away, then I would think, oh, there's something wrong with me, You know, am I even saved? How could I think this? How could I feel this and be a Christian? Is anybody with me on that? You're just like, that, you know, I shouldn't feel this way. We think we should just feel loving all the time and, and wonderful and ne never have a thought about ourselves and never be greedy. And, you know, it's just actually not reality because although we have born-again spirits as believers in Christ and there's a lot of good stuff in us, we still do have a flesh that we have to contend with And there is a war, you might say, that goes on in our soul. Now, if you feed yourself enough of the word, you're going to win most of those wars. Because if your spirit is stronger than your flesh, then you're going to come out the winner on top. And one of the biggest problems that I think that we have, and you're going to hear me say some things about this this weekend, is that, and I, I want to say this right, I think that we've heard, read the word, read the word, read the word, read the word. But actually, the Bible says we are to study the Word. And there's a big difference in reading and studying. Now, actually, if you study the word read, even in the Greek, it means to, to know more fully, to perceive, to grasp, and to understand. So it's a little bit different than what we think about just, you know, reading a chapter every day and getting a check mark on our little God calendar and going on about our business because we've put in our Bible time. We always feel a little bit guilty if we don't put in our Bible time. But you know, the truth is, is we don't study this for God. He already knows it. He wrote it. So we, we need to study it for ourselves. Amen? And it's great to read. It's great to listen to other people. I'm glad you're here tonight listening to me. I mean, today we can get so much word at the, just the punch of a button. It's amazing. I mean, you can download everything. You got You got the Bible on your phone. You can pop up a scripture on your way to work. And you can read a quick devotional. You can listen to, you know, half a teaching tape by somebody on your way to work. You can get a little word on your computer. But you know what? <laughs> I think sometimes we need to trade in some of our downloading for a little more digging. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sometimes it just gets a little bit too easy, and it's so easy for us that we're not even putting really much effort into it. And I believe that we have to be willing to not only put some time, but a little bit of Holy Ghost effort into studying the Word. You know, I don't know how many scriptures I have for tonight. I won't get to all of them. I probably got 30 or something like that. And I, you know, I know them. I mean, I've been doing this a long time. I could probably quote most of them. But I sat in my hotel room today and I looked up every single one of those scriptures and I read them because the more that I see that word, 
It's alive. And it, it literally comes into me. And it strengthens me. And it feeds me. And I'm kind of on a little Holy Ghost rampage right now trying to get people to realize that we need to get back to what, we, what we've lost some of in the last few years, which is really personally loving and studying the Word of God and not just waiting for somebody to spoon feed it to us all the time. Amen? So if we're going to handle temptation properly, then we need to make a decision that we're going to be students of the word. You say, well, I go to church every Sunday. Can I tell you something? Look at me while I tell you this. That's not enough. It's just not enough. Well, I watch your program every morning, Joyce. I'm glad you do. I hope you continue, but that's not enough either. You know why? Because your pastor's not God, and I'm not God, and you got to take time, and you got to go to him to get what you really need. So anyway, we'll probably say some more things about that over the weekend. But do you know that the Bible says that temptation must come? There's no way to live life and not be tempted. If we never had any temptations, we wouldn't need any faith. We wouldn't need the fruit of self-control that God's given us. If there was no temptation, there would be no, no pressing against anything in life. Temptation tests us. Temptation shows what quality of believer that we are. Let's look at a couple of scriptures. Let's look at Luke 17, 1, because I want you to see them. <laughs> and Jesus said to his disciples, temptation, snares, traps set to entice to sin are sure to come. They're sure to come. But woe to him by or through whom they come. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. Woe to the world for such temptations to sin and influences to do wrong. It is necessary that temptation come. But woe to the person on whose account or by whom the temptation comes. So he's basically saying, you don't... Don't even expect temptation not to come. And instead of trying to get to the point where you're never tempted, just make sure you're not a temptation to anybody else. And learn how to stay one step ahead of the devil. So when you are tempted, you're full enough of God and the wisdom of God to know how to resist those things right away so you don't fall into the temptation. You know, the model prayer that Jesus taught us to pray when his disciples said, teach us to pray, we have what we call the Lord's Prayer, but it's really like a model prayer. And he said, lead us not into temptation. He didn't say pray that you won't be tempted. Jesus did not say pray that you won't be tempted. He said pray that you come not into the temptation. So temptation is going to come. It's in the world. Our own flesh will tempt us. The devil tempts us. The devil will use people to tempt us. I doubt that any one of us goes through one whole week without being tempted to be offended or to be angry at somebody. How many of you beautiful, wonderful, amazing believers were tempted even today to get angry? Oh, my goodness. You have got to be kidding. I got a better response on that than I thought. That was almost about 80% of everybody in here. Well, you know what? I had that same temptation this week. And you know when you, get, when you get tempted, a lot of times it's after a great victory. You know that? Sometimes you have a great victory, and then all of a sudden comes this thing, and you're like, my gosh, can I just have one good week? <laughs> Wouldn't everybody just leave me alone and let me have one good week? You know what? The only way we can have really good weeks consistently is to live in Christ. And to learn that temptation is part of life. You don't have to feel condemned when you feel temptation. But you do, in the power of the Holy Ghost, need to resist it. We must learn how to resist it. And the sooner we resist it, the better off we're going to be. You know, Jesus was tempted. Jesus himself was tempted. Let's look at Hebrews 4, 15. Hebrews 4, 15. 
And I was just thinking about our TV audience that's with us right now. And you know, although I'm here doing a conference in Houston, we're very happy that you've joined us by television all around the world. And, and uh, I'm sure that many of you experience temptation in many different ways. And maybe you have thought, well, you know, if I just wasn't tempted, then I could live a better life. I could be a better person if I just wasn't tempted. But the good news is, is greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Now, if you haven't received Christ as your Savior, then you don't have Christ in you yet, and you're going to have weakness, but you can trade that weakness for strength by simply accepting Christ as the sacrifice for your sin and beginning a brand new life with him. And we're happy at our ministry to lead you into that relationship with Christ. All you got to do is call the number on your screen. Somebody's going to talk to you, and your sins can be forgiven, and you can begin a brand new life with Christ, and you can learn how to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might not be under something all the time, but be on top of things and be a victor in life. But it's wonderful for us to know that the Savior that we love so much and trust and believe in, that he understands what it's like to be tempted. I don't know about you, but I find, and maybe it's more of a woman thing than a man thing, but I just want somebody to understand me. I mean, I've told my husband, I don't care if you do or not, tell me you do. <laughs> How many of you just love it when you go to somebody and tell them your woes if they say, oh, man, I understand. Yeah, I, I get it. I understand. Don't you hate it, ladies, when you, when you tell your husband something like that and, you know, well, just, well, just get over it. Well, <laughs> just, well, just don't worry about it. You know, just, just, just don't worry about how the kids grow up. They're going to turn out fine. Just, just don't worry about it, you know. It's like... You do not understand me at all. And so Dave and I have an agreement now. He just says I understand, and even though I know sometimes he's just telling me that because I want to hear it, it still makes me feel better. But Jesus understands. Hebrews 4, 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liability to the assaults of temptation but we have one who has been tempted in every respect as we are yet without sinning. Hallelujah. He made it through and was able to resist every temptation. And I believe that we can do that more and more as we grow in him, get to the point where we can be very strong against every temptation that comes. Jesus, fully God and fully man, in his humanity, experienced every temptation that you experience. I want you to understand that tonight. He knows how you feel. He knows what it's like to be hurt, to have a hard time forgiving somebody. He knows what it's like to feel everything that you feel. And yet, in his divinity, he was able, by drawing strength from the Spirit, to resist every one of those and to go to the cross and pay the price for all the weaknesses that we can't resist and get into. And aren't we glad tonight for the cross of Jesus Christ and the blood that he shared and what he has done for us? I don't know about you, but I'm glad. And then verse 16 says, Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we might receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help us in plenty of time to meet every need. And so it's wonderful when we feel weak or we feel tempted to go to God right away and to realize that he understands and he doesn't turn away from us. Let me tell you, whoever you are in this place tonight or whoever you are watching by television, no matter what you have done, God is not turning his face away from you. God is looking toward you and he's reaching his hands out to you right now. Now, and it's not too late for you to have a fresh start. It's not too late for you to begin again. And there is no pit so deep that he can't reach down in it and lift you out. Amen? Amen. And a lot of us are living proof that you can overcome absolutely anything through the power of God. Apart from him, we can do nothing. But through Christ, we really can do all things. Jesus understands. I feel very strongly that somebody needs to reach out and grab that tonight. He understands 
what you're going through. But don't believe the lie that you can never be free. Don't believe the lies of Satan. Believe what the Word of God says because what you believe is what you're going to have. I said what you believe is what you're going to have. I said what you believe is what you're going to have. God's Word says, be it unto you even as you believe. And then in Luke 4.13, you're probably not going to care for this scripture much, but I'll take you to it anyway because I think it's a good one. I'm going to run you all over this Bible tonight. <laughs> Luke 4.13, and when the devil, now you know Jesus was tempted, he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Interesting, isn't it? Led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tested and tried for 40 days and 40 nights. After he went through every temptation from Satan and passed every test, verse 13 says, and when the devil had ended every, the complete cycle of temptation. I love that, the cycle of temptation. Have you ever noticed that sometimes it's not just one day? It's like, Monday, you get through it, and here it comes back again on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, something else happens, and then Thursday, something else happens, and you just think, oh, my gosh, when is this going to stop? When the devil had ended the complete cycle of temptation, he temporarily left him. <laughs> that is, he stood off from him until another more opportune and favorable time. And I love verse 14. Then Jesus went back full of and under the power of the Holy Spirit, into Galilee, and the fame of him spread throughout the whole region round about. So here's the good news. When you make it through all of your tests and all of your temptations and you're standing firm, then you are doubly filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and God can use you in even a greater way than what he's ever used you before. So let me tell you that whatever you're going through right now, it is a test, and if you pass it, you will be stronger than you were before you entered it, and the anointing of God and his power will increase on your life, and God will be able to use you for greater things than he ever has before. Come on. Amen. See, some of you are getting stronger right now, and you didn't even know it. You've been hating what's really going to turn out to be your best friend. Amen. Don't be surprised when you have difficult times. The Bible says in James 1, to be wholly joyful when you fall into all kinds of trials and temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith brings out patience. Well, you know what? I found out they brought a lot of things out of me before we ever got around to patience. <laughs> that was the big problem. Do you know what happens when you're tested and tried, when pressure is put on you, our me? The real me shows up. Not the spiritual me that I take to church. Not, not the victorious me that I present to all my friends. And it helps us. It actually helps us when we go through things like that because then we're able to see the weaknesses in us and we can go to God knowing that he understands and that there's no condemnation, but we can face where we're at so Jesus can help us get to where we need to be. And we do it for him. I don't even have to do this to get to heaven. We go to heaven because Jesus died for us if we believe in him. But I want to serve him here in the earth, and I want to be victorious, and I want to have what Jesus died to give me, and I want to be what he wants me to be and do what he wants me to do. Amen. I'm excited about all the work that God is doing in people's lives around the world. And I think the hungrier you are for God, the happier you're going to be. Amen? You know, I recall one morning when I was getting ready to go do my little Thursday morning Bible study when I was still back doing those at the church that I worked at. And Dave and I would had an argument, which wasn't all that uncommon in those days. And uh, I, I mean, I was really mad. I mean, piping hot mad. Now, in about an hour, I had to be at the church to preach. And you have never done anything fun until you try to preach mad. It just, somehow or other, at least for me, I find that whatever's in my soul, as the God part of me is coming out of my spirit, sometimes some of the soulish stuff collects on it, and it just doesn't come across right to people. So 
I really have a reverential fear and awe of God concerning getting up here and not being right with God and right with people because I don't do anything fancy, so what I do really desperately needs to be anointed. I really depend on God's anointing to keep your interest because like I said, you know, I don't sing, I don't play an instrument. You know, I do tell a funny story every once in a while, but I can never even know what that's going to be until God gives it to me. So I'm just here with the Word and my Bible, and I really, really, really need God. So I was really just like, I was having a rough time that morning because I felt so guilty because I had let myself get mad. And God taught me something that morning that has been so valuable to me for many years, and I hope you get a hold of this tonight. He took me to Ephesians 4, which says, when you're angry, it says, be angry and sin not. Let's look at Ephesians 4, 26. How can you be angry and not sin? I thought being angry was sin. This is going to set somebody free tonight. Because see, the point is, listen to me, even if you have a bad temper and you get mad frequently, if you keep feeling guilty about it, you'll never get free. Because guilt is just like a treadmill. It just wears you out and never does anything for you. So what you have to do is you have to go to God with it and say, I know that you still love me. I know this doesn't mean that I'm not born again. My confidence is in you. I don't want to be like this. And I know that you can change me. I know that your word can change me. And then what I recommend to people is to take the word of God like medicine. Just take it like medicine. Now, you know, if you've got a headache, you don't put a Band-Aid on your head. How many of you, if you have a headache, you don't put a Band-Aid on your head? You'll take some kind of aspirin or whatever it is you take. And if you cut your finger, you don't stick an aspirin on your finger. You put a Band-Aid on it. So we're smart enough to know how to doctor our natural illnesses, but sometimes we don't know how to doctor our sick souls. And the Word of God is medicine for your soul. But let me tell you something. If you've got a bad temper, listening to a teaching on success and prosperity is not going to help you get over it. If you have a bad temper, you need to go to the concordance in your Bible, and you need to look up everything that you can about anger, realizing in the meantime that God is not mad at you, that Jesus understands you, that you don't have to be under condemnation, but if we really love Jesus, then we cannot be satisfied to stay that way. There's something in us that says, for, for Christ's sake, I must change because I want to glorify him in the earth today. I am not willing to stay like this. And I really want to see people get to the point where they're not struggling with things, these things because they think they have to because God's going to be mad at them and not love them if they don't, but where they just want to do it for His sake because they love Him with all of their heart. You know, we're all tempted at times to do wrong things. It's actually just part of life. That's why God has given us the fruit of self-control. And the key is learning how to resist it. So what is the best time to pray about temptation? When you're in the midst of it or long before you're ever tempted? I think when we know we have weaknesses in areas, it's wise to pray about those things on a regular basis. that the Word of God is true, and that He changes lives, and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. We do humanitarian works all over the world. You know, here we are in Haiti. I'm here in Thailand. Thessaloniki, Greece. In the back bush of Africa. On the Mekong River. In the city of Phnom Penh. Human trafficking. Today's term for modern slavery. 
We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is, this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change, you can get healing, you can survive. This little girl at 10 years old escaped on her own from sex trafficking. She lives on the streets. She was rounded up by vans that travel around and steal these children. They were actually weighing the little girls so that they could ship them out of the country. And she was able to sneak away and escape. She ran to the tent that you see behind me where we feed the children and ask for safety. So we're able to feed Farisua here every day. We're able to grant her just a little bit of safety and to help her in any way that we can to tell her about Christ and just to love on her a whole bunch because she's an awesome little girl. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelfs af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl partner.